Welcome to Dory Cody on Shamanism, a weekly podcast that explores one theme in shamanism throughout each month. Get comfortable, have a seat, and let's get started. Welcome to episode 56 of my weekly podcast. This week we're going to be talking about how we might work together in ceremony to achieve greater harmony, balance, and serenity in the world. As we spoke about in earlier episodes, in our current times that we're living in, sometimes anger, fear, and judgment of the masses is overwhelming to many of us who approach life from a gentler, more forgiving perspective. How can we work together to make a difference? One of the ways that I advocate people work together to make a difference is through the simple act of ceremony. Again, I believe we talked about ceremony in another podcast some time ago. Particularly, ceremony can be used for creating peace, harmony, joy, balance, love, kindness, and all of those kinds of things, just by setting the intention that this is what we're doing today. So whether we gather with our family, friends, circle of loved ones, other shamanic practitioners, um, neighbors, people in our community, with a fo- or our you know church community, our spiritual community, and we have as an intention that we're going to create a simple ceremony. Does not need to be complicated. I say simple ceremony, where, for instance, people come together around a small fire, whether it's an indoor fire or an outdoor fire, and each person writes on a pe- little scrap of paper. Um, a thought or a word that expresses uh, their gratitude or their sense of love. Like, I love my, I really love my dog today. I love my children. I love the tree outside my window. I love this. I love that. Just write that on a little piece of paper, and then each person throws that paper into the fire with the intention that they're sending these feelings, these thoughts, these words into the atmosphere, the the greater place in which we live, that in and of itself is a way of coming together with others, sharing this sense of love, gratitude, or whatever it is your intention is, and feeding, literally feeding the world's energy with the power of those words, thoughts, and feelings. Ceremony is something you can do on your own, but there's also great power in coming together to do ceremony with others. I could write a book about ceremony, maybe someday I will, because um, ceremony, as I said, does not need to be complicated. It can be simply um, taking a feather and speaking words of love and using the feather to send those words out into uh, the breeze. That's a ceremony. A ceremony can very simply be taking some um, sacred tobacco or some um, cedar, dried cedar or sage or something out to a tree and gifting it to the to the roots of the tree and asking the tree to harmonize with you today and expressing gratitude to the tree for doing its job on earth that's a ceremony so when we come together in ceremony whether it's in a church or a spiritual community and we sing and we dance and we read poetry, and we love one another, and we honor the earth, we are doing ceremony that feeds the greater good. It's feeding all beings. It's not just for our own selves. It's for everyone. And everyone in the community 
feels that sense of well-being and thoughtfulness and joy and harmony. And that creates a, a synergistic kind of uh, energy that is more than one plus one equals two or five plus five people equals more than ten. It multiplies and it feeds the atmosphere so that it has the potential for dissolving fear, anger, hatred, rage, and all of that. So how can people from scattered all over the globe connect to do ceremony together? Well, now there is a place where, you know, the advent of social media and the, um, the, the, the amazing speed of Internet connections can play a huge role in humans from all over the world coming together to create ceremony. For instance, I happen to know uh, within um, Sandra Ingerman's um, world – she creates a an intentional community every full moon where people are doing ceremony together all over the world. And, you know, anybody who's listening to this podcast who has an interest in that can just go to her website, sandraingerman.com. And that's Sandra, S-A-N-D-R-A, Ingerman, I-N like Nancy, G-E-R, M like Mary, A-N, like Nancy, Sandra Ingerman. Go to her website and sign on to her transmutation news, and you will get all the instructions you need to participate in this uh, monthly worldwide ceremony of peace, harmony, goodwill, and transmuting negativity. That's just one way. There are so many ways now that people are coming together. One of the things that I'm doing with most of my students these days who are in long-term programs with me is creating a virtual altar space. In other words, a space outside of this reality that we live in where we all can go to visit and um, bring gifts to the altar, whether it's a pine cone or a flower or a feather, and uh, dance and sing in this non-ordinary space to uh, create harmony for ourselves and for the greater good, for all beings. There are more websites and social media pages like on Facebook that I could name where people can access ways to come together to do group ceremony. You don't have to pay for it. Certainly there are many places where you would have to pay, but there are many places where you don't have to pay a red cent to participate in teachings or in ceremony with people all over the world, whether they have the same language as you or not, because truly when we create this kind of energy, it surpasses language. It doesn't matter whether you understand someone else's words. What matters is understanding or tapping into the feeling. Please say more about attitude, action, and surrender. Well, you know, the attitude that someone enters something with really does matter. And um, and then, you know, at the other end is also surrender. And so how do we work with all that together? Well, let me see if I can give you some examples. If I go into a situation... Uh, Let's say, for instance, I have to go to um, an event that I really would prefer not to go to, but because I care about other people and I care about their feelings, I, I go because I know that my presence means something to them. But I don't have a great attitude about it. I'm not really all that um, 
convinced that this is what I want to do today. Uh, so I go into it with like not such a great attitude. And, and yet I'm taking the action. I am putting myself into the action of going. And then ultimately, hopefully, I surrender to the truth that I have agreed to attend this activity, dinner, whatever it is, and a surrender to the truth that I am there, that I can honor all the other people who are there, whether um, they are people that I resonate with or not, and be fully present. But in order to do that, I have to surrender my own attitude. Now, the flip side of that is one can go into um, into something with a great attitude, like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to this play with my friends tonight, and I'm really, really, really happy about it. And then I get to the play, and the uh, theater is freezing, and... Um, you know, I'm not happy. I'm not comf- I'm not physically comfortable. Um, and um, but I've created the action of being there now, right? And so, what are my choices? I get up and leave, and that's certainly a choice. And the other is that I surrender to the truth that I want to be at this play, and that it's okay for me to surrender. Um, some physical discomfort for a period of time for the sake of experiencing what I have chosen to do. So all of those um, really interesting human feelings are in constant interplay with one another. And um, I I believe it's something that I would like to explore in a little more depth in, uh, in another podcast in the future. Because I I believe that we can really, um, you know, regulate or somehow um, spontaneously create a better atmosphere for ourselves when we adjust our attitude, adjust our actions, and then ultimately surrender to what is and Accept that we cannot change it, just like that serenity prayer. Accept that I cannot change this. And so I have a choice and uh and and I'm going to I'm going to create whatever choice there is, but it's for me. I can't I can't change the temperature in the theater, right? I can stay in a place of like being very grumbly about it and not be in a state of serenity. But if I surrender and just say, okay, the theater is cold. I have two choices. I can leave. Uh, actually, I have three choices. I can leave, or I can stay and be grumbly and unhappy about the temperature, or I can surrender to the fact that it's cold in here, but I'm still going to enjoy this play. That is the path of serenity. S- surrendering that mm, it's cold, and I'm still going to enjoy this play. Yeah, usually there are three choices in any situation, exit, voice, or loyalty. Mm. You can leave, you can speak up, or you can uh, just deal with it mm-hmm. and go along with it. Mm-hmm. And what I'm, what I'm calling surrender, which is right. letting go. Right. Letting go exactly. of what is. Yep. You mentioned Sandra Ingerman's website earlier, and you've spoken about a, a, an altar space where some healers have created a place to put um, prayers and mm-hmm. supplications. Do you have a virtual location where listeners might be able to meet to do healing work? Currently, I do not have a virtual location that... I have made public to everybody who is listening to these podcasts. I do have these virtual locations, as I was saying, that I'm working with uh, my students with that they find very helpful. And um, it's a great question and one that perhaps we can explore 
I could do a podcast in the future where the entire podcast is about me uh, creating a guided um, visualization or meditation where I take everybody who's listening to a virtual space that they then can visit at any time and, um, you know, a place where everybody who is listening to this podcast at any time in the future could go to access. So, um, you know, I think that's a great idea and one that perhaps I should explore for a future podcast. And I would suggest that everybody stay tuned in because it might be a good thing for me to do later uh, this spring or early summer. In the meantime, if people attend religious services, those uh, congregations, unbeknownst to them, have created a body of energy and prayer, yes? So there really is a way to tune into, even if you're not in connection to that service and you're not at the 10 o'clock service sitting in the pew, right. there's a way to connect to the general energy of any spiritual community. Absolutely. And I do that regularly. For instance, if I'm feeling challenged at some point with something that's going on in my life, I can go to a, um, you know, a shamanic circle of my peers where um, we have been, you know, we have done ceremony or we're singing together. Or I can tap into the power of that spiritual community really pretty instantaneously because it's a power that I'm familiar with. So, yes, all of that is absolutely true. And there's also great value in having a place that is common to people who don't even know each other, but yet where there is um, a space of tremendous peace, uh, harmony, well-being, and, um, you know, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic kinds of experiences where somebody can feel that they can both receive gifts and a sense of harmony, a serenity, peace, balance, and so forth. And then it can also give because there's also great value in giving and feeding the spiritual energy, not just absorbing it. This completes our questions for the whole series on maintaining serenity in toxic times. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, other than to say I truly appreciate the listeners and uh, always am very open to receiving messages from people about what they enjoy about the podcast or any questions they have about this topic or uh, questions they might have or suggestions they have for a future topic. Thank you for listening to Dory Cody on Shamanism. We'd love to hear your thoughts, stories, reactions, and questions. Come on over to DoryCody.com and join the conversation. And tune in next week for more on this subject or next month for a new subject. You can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes or sign up on DoryCody.com to receive notices when the podcasts are posted. That's Dory, D-O-R-Y, and Cody, C-O-T-E, dot com. Drumming and Rattling by Dory Cody and Terry Morgan. Technical Assistance and Audio Production by JillHackett.com. And this is Susan Savell, wishing you many blessings in your life. We hope to have you join us next time.